why do you think people of color are being discouraged to enter into the field of healthcare? That's a really, really good question. I think it's some of the same reason that all of us are a bit discouraged. And going through the pandemic, like the two full calendar years, even beforehand, and seeing how the perception of health has changed us in a few short years, and some of the yelling and screaming, no one wants to deal with that, no matter what your color is, your background or ethnicity, nobody wants to deal with that. But if you think of a race or, or even religion or ethnicity that has been so disenfranchised already before there was such thing as, as the coronavirus, why would you then purposely want to sign up for more headache. Your life has already been hard enough. Mm -hmm. And then you're now going to enter a profession where as noble and humble as it is to serve another human being, you're wondering in the back of your head, when I go to work every day, am I going to get spit on or kicked? I'm trying to give simple medical advice and they're telling me that the science isn't real. We framed it in certain aspects of the media. We're signing up for this is signing up for a lot of headache. And that didn't always used to be the case. Being a nurse is truly one of the greatest joys I've ever had in my life. And I want other people to experience that. But as much as I've been called so many words at the bedside that were probably not appropriate for your podcast, I wouldn't want that on somebody else either. I think as a society, we need to get back to respecting that profession, and then maybe we can draw more people, not just of color, but of all races, back to it. But what you say in terms of your experiences at the bedside, this is pre-pandemic. Very true. And so it's been there. It's just, I think it's gotten worse. Mm -hmm. I think that some of the negativity of vitriol around the vaccine and the virus has just given those naysayers and those who feel comfortable treating those with disrespect and prejudice and bias. It's given them another arrow in their quiver to attack this profession. And I'm um, one very much of a mindset of bend, don't break. But sometimes when you're truly attacking the science and the stuff that really supports our profession and allows us to treat people as efficiently as we can, that might be the straw that broke the camel's back at some point. That's one thing that attacked me, remember at the bedside, for my color, okay, I'm still going to help you. But then when you're really just attacking who I am and what I believe in as a clinician, too, on a daily basis, that's just really hard to get over. And these experiences are different in home health care? No, because as long as we're dealing with people, you know, people are inherently flawed. But I have certainly found, Grant, I'm only just comparing the emergency department to home health. I've certainly found those recipients that we're dealing with in home health, whether it was skilled or now in private duty, much more receptive. I mean, I can't even count on a weekly basis how many thank you cards or calls of appreciation. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, and, and you probably would maybe think the same, I don't remember too many thank yous in the emergency department. It is a thankless job. I mean, that's what we sign up for to some extent, but I don't recall too many of those. So just that appreciation can help someone, especially within this, this field for as long as I come back the next day and keep doing a good job. Everybody, no matter what you do, whether you are putting together sandwiches at a Wendy's or whether you are in the world's biggest healthcare system, everybody wants to feel valued for what they do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even if you don't get that appreciation from the patients, which is true, the emergency department, you don't get a lot of thank you. No. Um, <laughs> the person comes in unconscious and they get discharged later. They don't know what happened. They don't realize they came through the emergency Precisely. department and what the ED team did for them. But getting that appreciation somewhere. So if it's not coming from the patients than coming from administration, the genuine appreciation. Correct. Yeah, not just we order a couple of pizzas for the night shift and they're in the break room, but true, genuine appreciation. For us, by us, and just for us, this is hope for men, men.